The Lord bless you on tonight. Welcome to Word on Wednesdays. We bring you greetings from the Mount Calvary Community Church. We are the biggest little church in Omaha, Nebraska. And I'm your host, your servant leader, your boy, Bishop Kevin Javon Chambers. And tonight with, with me, we have uh, Associate Minister, Minister Antoinette Simmons, who will be the lead on tonight. And we have our Minister's Board President, Reverend Randale, as we learned the other week, Darnell Moore. <laughs> That's Reverend Randale Darnell Moore. Don't forget to sow your seed. You may do so by going to Cash App. That's dollar sign M3C5112. Dollar sign M3C5112. Or you may visit us on the web at www.m3comaha.org. That's www.m3comaha.org. Chief. Praise the Lord. We are located at 5112 Ames Avenue in the beautiful city of Omaha, Nebraska. Before we proceed with our word on Wednesday on tonight, we'll have prayer by Reverend Randell Darnell Moore. Father God, in the name of Jesus, Lord, once more and again we come thanking you for just being God and God alone, Lord. We thank you for being in the midst of all those who are sick and concerned, all those bereaved, and all those who are incarcerated, Lord. We thank you for touching each and every last individual yes, who is going through a health challenge right now. <clears throat> touch those going through a financial challenge right now. And touch those going through a faith challenge right now. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. And thank God. Amen. Don't forget to sow your seed, cash app, dollar sign, M3C5112, or visit us on the web at wwwm 3 c Omaha.org. We are so excited tonight. We bring you greetings again from the Mount Calvary Community Church. We are in the pastor study, and this is our word on Wednesday, and it's a powerhouse edition tonight. Praise God. So we have these two fine preachers, our youth pastor and our minister's board president. So tonight, Minister Simmons, uh, what did the Lord reveal to you to discuss and to share with the people of God on tonight? Uh, two words, faith and hope. And we need both right now in these times and ages. So we're going to talk about faith and hope. And the scripture is going to come from Luke 17, verses 7 through 10. And the other one would be Hebrews 6, 16 through 19. Also, um, an additional um, scripture would come from the 11th chapter of Hebrews. All right. We'll wind up with that. But anyway, faith. How would you define faith? Uh, as looking up faith and finding out the definition is a confidence or a trust in a person, thing, or a concept. But in context of religion, one can define faith as confidence. Um, or trust in a particular system of religious belief. I've even seen that a piece of it, as far as divine, is people who really don't even believe in a particular religion, seeing that is belief without evidence. Right. And that kind of struck me, and I was like, okay, these are people who really don't even believe in in God or Christ, but they know that it is a belief without evidence. But faith has two parts. Right. The first part is believing in God and in what Jesus has done for us to make our salvation possible. And the second part of faith is committing ourselves to Christ. And that's a big one, is, is that commitment. Uh, it said, but I want to go back to one verse, 17.5. Uh, it says, the apostle said to Jesus, increase our faith. And I got to thinking, I'm like, uh, why would they need to increase their faith? But Jesus explained that in 6, he said, if you have faith as small as a mustard seed, you can say to this mulberry tree, be uprooted and planted in the sea, and it will obey you. And I was like, wow, that's tremendous faith. Huge faith. Small as a mustard seed. And you telling a tree to get up and move? and go to the sea, and it will do that. Um, to me, that's that's huge. But without faith, it says in, in Hebrews 11, 6, it's impossible to please God. 
Right. We, we can't please God without having that faith. Um, but Jesus took a different turn. He was talking about something totally different when the uh, the apostles asked him asked him to increase their faith. He was talking about forgiving people seven times a day, if it need be. So they figured that was humanly impossible. So they wanted their faith to increase. But at the same time, they wanted to have that their crown of glory right being in there, see who was bigger than the other. So Jesus, like I said, he took a different turn. And he's, in verse 7 it says, Suppose one of you has a servant plowing or looking after the sheep. Right. And if you notice that, plowing and looking after the sheep, it took my mind back to Genesis, the two brothers. One plowed the field and one took care of the sheep. Will he say to the servants when he come into the field, come along now and sit down and eat? Whom would he rather say, prepare my supper and get yourself ready and wait on me while I eat and drink? After that, you may eat and drink. Will he thank the servant because he did what he's supposed to do? So you also, when you have done everything that you were told to do, say, we are unworthy servants. We have only done our duties. And with what Jesus was trying to impart was that you only need a little bit of faith. Why would you need to increase your faith? Take care of what the master told you to take care of first. And that's what I was thinking. I was like, okay, when I when I do this, three more coming back at me. So it's really for me as well. It's like you must believe that Jesus exists and, and uh, the rewards that for those who seek him, you must uh, operate by faith, even if you must do so by yourself alone. And not go and and going against the norms of uh, today's today's world. Right. You know when I see the news and the people who are going against the norms of the day when they say wear masks or gloves when you're out in public, people are rebelling. They don't want to do what the authorities say to do. But if you really notice, my husband and I was talking this evening. Uh, I remember back in the day when we were kids, you couldn't walk in the store if you didn't have a shirt or shoes on. The same concept applied right now. You put that shirt and you had shoes on so you can go inside. No shoes, no shirt, no, no service. No service. Right. So it's the same way what Jesus was talking. But when, when it comes to faith, you know, they, they wanted that supersized faith. I want my faith to be huge. And I found myself sometimes asking, Lord, you know, increase my faith. He said, why? My grace is sufficient for you. You only need but this little bit right here. Because if you take that little bit, as it says in, in verse 7, you can tell that mulberry tree to go to the sea and be planted there. So we don't have to ask for all of, all of that supersized faith. Because he said if we just have that faith as small as a mustard seed in verse 6, we have the right size faith. We don't need the huge, supersized faith. Mm -hmm. But uh, but, he, I, I, but I think in, in terms of what they were asking Jesus mm -hmm. to increase their faith, their faith was because of the example about forgiveness. The forgiveness. And I think we have to give some respect right. to the apostles in, in regards to, you know, I'm the servant leader, and I say to you, you got to be more patient with the trustees or be more patient with the usher board. And, and, you know, that same context, it's like, Lord, look here. Out of all the stuff we done heard and that we witness, you got to increase our faith if we got to forgive 70 times 7 times 7 times 7. Oh, you no. know, <laughs> how do I do this because of myself? You know, I can do nothing. And, and we can, he can aside and speak, you know, all this stuff. And that area of forgiveness, mm -hmm. which is coupled with, our reconciliation, you know, forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Uh, that right there is a hard pill. It's like a horse pill to swallow. 
Because we don't want to forgive people to the degree that we want to be forgiven by God for the stuff that we've done. We would rather God forgive us and then we hold grudges against against our brothers or our sisters. Mm -hmm. And and so then without faith, mm -hmm. God said it's impossible to please me. Right. You got to believe that He is and that He is a uh rewarder yep. of those who seek Him diligently. Mm -hmm. So that that that's that's good, Reverend. I like that. But I like that. I think it's possible for us to do that. I mean he he gives us the instruction. Yes, yes. So we can forgive that mm -hmm. seven, 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 and seventy. Right. We can do that. But we only need that yeah. little bit of faith. Now you know, in my secular work, my secular work, I'm a grant reviewer, and so for the Department of Education, for instance, we have this one part of the review that we do, mm -hmm. and uh, there's two two phases to it. Is it attainable? And is it ambitious? And sometimes, mm -hmm. uh, yes, we can do it, mm -hmm. but it's ambitious, it's ambitious, depending upon the degree that we feel we were wrong. And then, of course, you know, in church everywhere, not just Mount Calvary, people will sit on stuff and be like, why are you mad at Red Moore? Right. I don't even know. Don't even I know. just don't like him. <laughs> 1972. But see, I, I, I find like the apostles... I, I find after he taught them, they said, increase our faith because what they were saying was, what? <laughs> How, I mean, the, the person stabbed me, you know, in five years ago. I may or may not remember why, but I just know that something was the catalyst. Mm -hmm. And how can you, I know you are the Lord, I know you're the Savior, I know you're God, but how can you tell me to for keep forgiving this person over and over and over again? So I understand why they said, I need your help. I need you to increase my faith. Because without you, it's, a, it's not going to happen. But do you really think they needed their faith increase or just need that assistance in showing them how? I think that's what it was, the assistance. The assistance. Probably a little bit of both. Yeah, because mm -hmm. if, if you have, like I said, that mustard seed faith, mm -hmm. you can do anything. Right. We can do anything in Mount Calvary. Mm-hmm. But we need to finish what the master tells us to do. That's and true. I think that's what will help us to increase our faith. Yes. The more we go out and, as you say, go out on a limb and knowing that limb is not going to break, mm -hmm. that's what I think we, we need to do. We have to go out on a limb and just keep going and trust God. It, that's where faith is. It, that word is that trust, that confidence. So... If we have that faith and that confidence, and I think when we say the word faith and the word trust, people think it's two different things when it's actually the same. So we need to increase our faith. And I think how we increase our faith, I don't think Jesus has to give us because he's already given us all that we need. He said my grace is sufficient. He said I gave you all that you need. That's my prayer. That's okay. my prayer right there. My yeah. grace. I pray that prayer. Yeah. <laughs> it's, 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 he gave it us. But we have to learn how to use it. Yes. Uncover it. And as it say, open it up. So he can reveal it to us. Because if we don't have faith, how can we please God? How can we do our work that the that the Lord has allowed us to do or want us to do? If we don't have faith, we just go on through the motions. A good question here. What happens when you forgive a person, but you still have a little bit of, I can't come back to where I left, but you want to come back? So, mm -hmm. I, yeah, so I guess the question is, what happens when you forgive a person, but you still have a little bit of fault, and you are... Uh, there's a stumbling in, within yourself, a stumbling block mm -hmm. to uh, to coming back to where you were. Well, here's the thing for me. Mm -hmm. I can't speak okay. for y'all. I forgive you, but I ain't going to forget you. Mm -hmm. We all do that. I'm not going to forget. And so the next time you want to borrow $5, 
If I have it to spare, I just give it to you and won't ex don't expect you it back and don't have no no issue with it. Mm -hmm. But I never, mm -mm, no Lord, <laughs> no 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 Reverend, no. Okay, uh, but we do experience that because you know we're human, right? And we have the inclination to hold on to stuff. Mm -hmm. um, can you imagine Jesus on the cross mm. to the degree that all of the things that happened to him? And there are folks who are incarcerated in this country that are innocent. Mm -hmm. Jesus himself was innocent, yet he hung there and said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. I don't know. Had I had the opportunity to replace Jesus and hang on the cross for y'all. <laughs> I'm not divine. <laughs> I've gotten it yet. Uh -uh. I'm still a work in progress. Still a work in progress. His humanity mm -hmm. was overshadowed by his divinity that he could ask of his father to forgive the people who had wronged him in that situation. Mm -hmm. That's a miracle for me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so I would suggest to you who are watching us tonight, if you have those stumbling blocks in your way, that you would just submit that to God, even the more. But in the meantime, as my sister-in-law said, and in between time and before the next time, make sure you do right by them. You right. do right. Mm -hmm. right. Love them. If, you, if, you are, if you're a natural hugger, hug them. If you are naturally shake their hand, shake their hand, speak. Mm -hmm. But do not, do not sin. Right. In the way you execute, quote unquote, judgment or your relationship with them. Uh, and like with this Corona stuff, you don't know the day. And they've been saying this, you know, ever since I was a little boy. You don't know the day you don't know nor the hour. Mm -mm. And I would rather, as Miss Evelyn, when she went to sleep and she said, I ain't married with nobody. That's it. Mm -hmm. That's <laughs> and I keep saying that. Uh, she said, I'm not mad at nobody. When I leave this expression and transition to the next plane, I want to make sure I don't have no art with nobody. Right. And if you got an art with me, you better tell me, you better talk to me about it. Ye who are overtaken with a fault, ye who are spiritual, I think I'm in the Bible. That's you right. got to restore such a one. Mm -hmm. Right. So we got to have a conversation. Now, because there are times when uh, people are mad with you, but they have not articulated it right, right. to you. I don't know why. Or they just have grudges against you. I don't know why. Sometimes it's hearsay, and sometimes it's perception. But whatever, if you got a problem with Kevin, take, take the bishop off my name. That, that's just a title. Take all that. If you got a problem with Kevin Javon, you better have a conversation. Yeah. Call me. 531-466-8478. Call me. Let's talk about it. That's it. But I, I just want to point out that I believe that you can forgive someone uh, multiple times because there have been a lot of times where it's the analogy I want to use is that somebody rolls their wheelchair over your foot. Mm -hmm. Then they, yeah. you know, then yeah. down the line they do it again. Then they do it again. And each time you say, you know, and you forgive them, it, it, it's a process. Right. It's right. almost like Donnie McClurk would say, we fall down, but we get, we get up. up. And so as long as we have time, we have time to get it right, to forgive, right. and to move forward. Can you come back from a, a certain place? Absolutely. Right. I believe that, like you said, restoral is important. Now, I'm a, a right. firm believer that you restore, you restore as quick as possible. So that, you know, that there are, because no man knows the day or the hour. You never know. It. We always said the bridegroom is coming. And one day he's going to come when you thought, well, I'll put it off for tomorrow. And you won't have tomorrow to fix it. Right. So I think it is very, very important. Now, there was another question that was mm -hmm. posed that I think is good for our conversation. Is there anything that could be considered unforgivable? I believe in our text in this very chapter. It said you are to forgive seven times seven, or 70 times 70. And the point is to keep forgiving regardless. Um, it is not easy. <laughs> I heard a preacher say that once. It's not easy, but it's not impossible. 
And uh, I believe that as long as we have time, we have to keep trying to build those bridges. If you don't build the bridge, then the bounds, I mean, uh, um, what would we say? We want to be cords that cannot be broken. We begin to fray. Right. We, I mean, dirt gets in there. If you know anything about climbing cords and whatnot, they always say to keep your climbing cords clean because of the simple fact that debris can start to unravel the cord. And that's what happens in our own personal relationships. Debris gets in there yes. uh, yeah. and starts unraveling yeah. our cord. So that's why you hear all the time, why well, stop going to X, Y, and Z situation or place because... Or I always uh, gave into somebody else's ministry, but they never did anything for me. So we, it's very important. Right. Uh, I won't get too far off of there, but it's very important that we uh, forgive as soon as possible, as soon as it can be reconciled. I think we have to let go and let God. Mm -hmm. You know, Oprah Winfrey said she was walking down the streets of New York one time and seeing this woman that she had something against. Mm -hmm. And this woman was happy. She was going about her business. And she said she had to stop and think, this woman walked right past me and didn't even know who I was. And I didn't hold, held this grudge for all these years. Wow. And it was eating wow. at me wow. to when at that particular moment, she said, I let it go. And mm -hmm. it's a freeing experience. Yes. You have to free yourself from all. That's what Satan wants. He wants to bound you up. Mm -hmm. and keep you bound and with in God if we forgive not only we have to forgive that person sometimes we have to forgive ourselves yes you have to I think forgiveness yes. in the process of forgiveness is forgiving mm -hmm. yourself um, and when you establish that with you right. then it'll be an easier process I believe in regards to your forgiveness and how you right. uh, extend it to your brothers and, and your sisters right um uh, and it, it is, you know, we have so many examples of, of, of how to do that. Um, uh, but forgiving yourself, freeing yourself from, and sometimes it's false guilt. Yep. Yeah. It's false grief. False. It's just every false fear. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Things that you have built up in your own psyche. That does not even exist. Right. And when you can, once you can free yourself from that, I believe the process will be easier. There's a comment also about mm -hmm. church hurt. Mm -hmm. You want to talk mm -hmm. about that? I, I like to say that church hurt has two proponents. Uh, one is a firefighter. One who is actively trying to put out those fires. Who is actively trying to repair to restore the situation. Mm -hmm. And then you have um, you have fire starters. Right. Church hurt happens because a lot of people are fire starters, or a lot of individuals are fire starters. We have to remember that the church is a hospital, which means it is filled with those who are diseased, with those who have, uh, um, I, I heard a pastor say, who are lunatics, meaning the moon, who uh, not necessarily mean that you're crazy, but that you have, you know, we have moods. What, what does the Bible say? We wrestle not against flesh and blood but we wrestle against powers and principalities. There are a lot of situations that come into the church that are there to not only because you're trying to be repaired, but Satan rides people yes. to church. I think T.O. Franklin said yes. that. Uh, Satan is too lazy to come to church. He rides people right. to church. And so if he can't, I mean, he, he gets bored if he can't come into the church and try to disrupt let me go over here and bother, you know, uh, brother uh, uh, rolling in the, uh, in the, in the deep uh, today. Let me go and, and talk to a sister about this gossip that I heard. I mean, it, it, it is, it, church hurt happens, but you have to, by the renewing of your mind, you have to decide, am I going to let somebody keep me from the love of God or am I going to move forward with what God has for me to do? Am I going to miss the mark? I just read something that has nothing to do, I think it was in Hebrews uh, uh, 6 and 1, I think, and it said, we are moving on to his perfection. We, that means that we're not perfect. Right. Nobody right. else in the church is perfect. The, uh, but that part and parcel of what we're saying, they step on your toe, and you have to forgive them for your own sake, for Christ's right. sake. Pastor, you just talked about the very uh, 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 
time that Christ was on the cross, I want to talk about his passion, but that's just a portion of it. Right. When he forgave those individuals right. who did wrong against them. But at the same time, he didn't say, well, I am completely done with you after I forgive you. I'm right. not going right. right. to bless you. Right. I'm right. not going to be there for you. Y'all done what y'all done, and I'm, I forgive you, but it's, it's over with. He said that I'm going to leave you a comforter. He said, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. Now, wait, you right. going too far. Oh, okay. the second part of the right. <laughs> it's, 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 it's hope. It's hope. It's hope. It's hope. Right. It's hope. It's hope. And so, once I've established my faith, and, right. and I've been saying for, since I've been here, it just was revelation. Faith is a substance <laughs> of things that, that don't make sense. sense. That don't make sense. It's true. <laughs> It don't make sense why I forgive you, but I right, forgive you. But I'm going to do it mm -hmm. because I'm I'm pressing towards that mark. That That's my scripture, Pastor, that I, I'm, I'm trying to strive for that mark, the high calling. Because if I'm striving to be like the world, what's the point? You know, you can go back out there and do everything that they're doing. No, but we're striving to do something different. God wants us to be like him. Yeah. He wants to restore us. In order to restore us, we need to get rid of some junk. Mm -hmm. He's there to help us. And that's where that increase the faith is. I need my faith increased because I'm kind of wrestling with that right mm -hmm. now. I got a problem with that right now. Right, so right. help me increase my faith so I can move forward. Mm -hmm. Now, God promised me. And that's where the Hebrew scripture come in. He made a promise and an oath that he was going to do what he said he was going to do. He was mm -hmm. going to, he said everything in order. Everything is fine. Here we are. I'm, I'm, I'm moving forward. I'm, I'm following God. That hope, we have to have that hope. We, in that faith, because I think they work hand in hand. Because mm -hmm. I know if God made an oath and said, this is what he's going to do, I need to believe him. I got to believe him. Yeah. Because if not, I'm going to be stagnant and be sitting right here 20 years from now on that same pew and not moving forward. I didn't worn down this pew for the last 20 years. <laughs> Haven't gotten anywhere. But hope, is, like the pastor said, the hope is the substance of things hoped for. Mm -hmm. Evidence is like things that things 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 not seen. Mm -hmm. Things that just don't quite make sense to us. Mm -hmm. Now, how am I supposed to do this? Well, if I know that God has made provisions, then I'm going to go ahead on and I'm going to follow him. But you know what? I, I, I was studying long ago and I didn't know if I had faith. So somebody told me to read this chapter and I read in Hebrews and I was like, okay, all these famous people in the Bible, they had faith in God. They had yeah. hope in God yeah. and but you know, those are just regular, ordinary people just like us. They had to eat like we do. They slept like we do. We, they had to clean their house. They had to bathe. They had to get up and get dressed. If God mentioned those same individuals in his word, eat up. Eat mm -hmm. not walk with God. Right. Just found out Noah did too. Mm -hmm. And I was like, oh, well, I read that scripture so many times, I didn't even see that. Poof, right over my head. But no, walk with God as well. I want to walk with God. So I have to have that hope. And I know that God, since he made that oath and made that promise, I'm going to stand on that promise. And sometimes I'll go to God, you know, Lord, you promised me. Mm -hmm. It says in your word, we have to give God his word back. Mm -hmm. I, I, see, you made a contract right here. There right. it is. Exactly. You promised me. So that's my hope. Because when we have hope, that's what's going to keep us moving forward. Right. It's going to keep us going. So it's like, I hope I get this money. No, you don't. You wish you got that money. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's a little different. Right. But there's even an avenue that we haven't covered. We always talk about needing to forgive other people. Mm -hmm. Learn to forgive yourself. You got to give yourself. You know, there, there are some times where we get to looking back at our lives about how we may have stepped on somebody mm -hmm. else's toes or how we may have hurt somebody else. Uh, uh, just using the example, you know, I'm going through a personal health challenge and, you know, I had to, for a good five, six minutes, I start blaming myself for not taking care of my body temple. 
the way that I needed to. Right. Mm -hmm. And so it dawned on me that instead of having a pity party, I have to forgive myself right. for not taking care of my body temple, mm -hmm. which ultimately is God's temple. It's God's temple. So, uh, it's house. Yeah. Your or, body yeah. is the temple. Yes. Mm -hmm. And even when we when it comes to um, things that we may have done or may have said, we may not have had a right relationship with our kids as far as raising them that we would have wanted to. And so we get to looking back. You right. have to forgive yourself. That woulda, shoulda, could. That, yeah, that exactly. <laughs> exactly. You know, where you may have said something that at the end of the day you realize you really didn't mean because it's, you know, but that was 10, 15 years ago. And you have to learn the spirit of release. You have yes. to release it. You have to forgive yourself. First lady said, acknowledge the part you play. Exactly. That's it. That's it. Mm -hmm. And I think that's where the <clears throat> disciples was, the reason why they probably did ask. It's because, mm -hmm. okay, uh, I don't know if I can do this. Exactly. And he said, yes, you can. Mm -hmm. All you need is that. Mm -hmm. Little bit. Yes, you can. You can do right. this. Because if you are in me, all things are possible. That's what I was going to say. Philippians says. All things are all possible. Things. All things. And it That's is right. possible because not only is that faith, we got that hope. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I have hope because it says God made an oath. He mm -hmm. made that promise. Yes. Lord, I'm going to stand on your promise because you said it. You mm -hmm. said it. Uh, what scripture was that? That was in 6. 6, 16 and 16. 19. 6. Ooh. Say people swear by someone greater than themselves. An oath confirms what is said and put an end to all argument because God want to, wanted to make the unchanging and unchanging nature of his purpose very clear to the heirs. Ooh, I'm an heir. You are heir. We are heirs mm -hmm. of what was promised. He confirmed it with an oath. So he promised us. He made an oath. You know, how many people make a promise and keep it? Mm -hmm. Not too many. A promise is no better than the one who makes it. That's it. And I know God, God can't lie. So I know if he made an oath to me and and, and saying that he's going to do certain things, then mm -hmm. I'm going to believe him. I'm going to have the faith as small as a mustard seed. That's all I need. Yeah. I need the right kind of faith. You know, uh, I was remember when I was in the hospital a long time ago, and the pastor came to visit me, and I wasn't expecting. And he was like, "Do you have faith?" And I was like, "Well, I, I don't know." <laughs> That's he all. He said, "You That's got faith, because if you didn't have faith, you wouldn't have laid down the bed, because you wouldn't think that bed would hold you." Mm -hmm. It's the same way with this chair. And we have faith, and people don't think about it. Faith, you have faith enough to sit in that chair mm -hmm. that you knew that chair was gonna hold you. What more? Faith that we need to put in God. And sometimes we just hope. Yes, that too. <laughs> that too. <laughs> hope I hope that you're going to hold I, me. I gained some weight during this quarantine. <laughs> so I also hope that it can hold it's and sustain hold me. me. Um, and so, so let's do it. You are tuned in to Word on Wednesday. We bring you readings from the Mount Calvary Community Church. For those of you who are just tuning in, I'm your host, uh, Bishop Kevin Chambers, and we have Reverend Randell Moore. And Minister Antoinette Simmons with us tonight. Don't forget to go to your cash app and sow your seed at dollar sign M3C5112, dollar sign M3C5112, or visit us on the web at www.m3comaha.org. Praise God. Amen. Do it every Sunday. I'm entitled to two or three mess ups. <laughs> well, that's good. the whole thing about God. We are not required to be perfect. And that's kind of the misnomer that we have in the church, mm -hmm. that everything has to be perfect. Mm -hmm. right. No, perfection comes when you're in the grave. That's it. That's it. When, that's when, when, when your body is in, is in, is in tune. Uh, mm -hmm. But right now, I'm working towards perfection. Right. Because, and, and, and so in, in the black church in particular, we have this thing that everybody has to walk a certain kind of way and be a certain way. I'm a, look, I'm the pastor, but I'm a mess. Y'all looking at me? I'm, I'm a whole entire mess. M-E-S-S. -S. That, when you Google my name, you might, Kevin Chambers, dash, me, a hot mess. I'm a mess. I'm a wretch undone. 
but some kind of way or another, God looks past my mess. Yes. And he still meets my needs. And he still accommodates that I can be uh, who he's calling for in these last days. Albeit, I'm a mess. That's a, that's a problem. He said he did us right. I worship, but I'm a mess. I praise, but I'm a mess. Mm -hmm. I preach, but I'm a mess. I prophesy, but I'm a mess. And so when we get that part of the of, 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 uh, out of the minds of people, mm -hmm. uh, they ain't living like nothing. No, I'm not. <laughs> but I ain't what I used to be. You see. But I'm not what I God used to be. Bless God. That's it. The things I used to do right, I don't do it no more. The places I used to go, I don't go no more. And if I should go, I don't buy drinks. That's it. Y'all ain't talking to me in, this, in this comment That's it. tonight. <laughs> There's places by choice I choose. But Jesus said he went to save the unsaved, yeah. not the saved. That's true. And so we want to go to the church and lock ourselves in. Now, that's what it, it takes to keep you holy and saved. Then by all means, uh, come in Sunday. We'll lock you in here. Oh, my God. And you be here by yourself. You can't do nothing but live holy. You're going to be hungry, though. <laughs> <laughs> You're gonna need some you're gonna need some Listerine right. in a few more days. But we'll lock you in here. You'll be saved. You'll be holy. You'll be well, as well, long as you got your cell phone. Said, I don't know now. As long as you're in here without your cell phone, because you can sin by yourself and still be on your cell phone, on your Facebook, your Instagram, your Snapchat, and just living all kinds of mm. Oh Lord. Yes. Almost cussed. Yeah. Just living all kinds of stuff. <laughs> Because these phones will just tear you up mm -hmm. and dry you bananas. Yeah. But I praise God that although I'm a mess, he blesses me. And he's allowed me to stand and to serve. And so then, so then for me, I'm just talking about me, mm -hmm. then it humbles me. Lord, I don't know why you use me, mm -hmm. but I sure glad you did. Yes. I get so happy when I when I push that lawnmower, I'd be out listening to my Ricky Dillard. And I just go bananas. I was lifting my hands this morning, and the other lady was walking, and she was pushing her lot more. So she waved back. I said, child, I ain't waving at you, but since you waved, <laughs> yeah, this, this one's for you. I was lifting my hands to the Lord because it just hit me. Mm -hmm. Just mowing the grass today. Because uh, you don't know, mm -mm. like I know, what the Lord. I know it's a cliche, mm -hmm. but you don't know like I know what the Lord has done for me. He brought me from a mighty long way. Mm -hmm. Again, another cliche, but it's so true. When you look back over your life and mm. see the mess you were in, although yeah. you're still in a mess, but when I think about the stuff that I used to be in, mm -hmm. oh, God, I thank mm -hmm. you. Because mm -hmm. you didn't have to do it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But I'm so glad you did. You, you didn't have to save David, me. You see what David? Yes. Look, look at David. He's prime example. He messed up. Mm -hmm. So when we talk about faith, that's that's our responsibility. That's because then how uh, how do they get faith? You can't get faith without it being preached or in or faith cometh by, by hearing. hearing. So how do you get faith? We have to preach in such a way that your faith is restored, renewed, re rejuvenated. That you can just stir up all the gifts that God has placed inside of you. That you right. can operate. And then you can look forward towards your hope in Christ Jesus. And I think that's where, even with the church hurt, if you don't hear, yes, you've got to hear it in order to get rid of it. Increase that faith. Mm -hmm. Like you said, comes by hearing. Mm -hmm. Comes by hearing. So if you stay away, how can you hear to increase that faith? You cannot. Yeah. You cannot. And and so that's why we need well, I don't need the church. Why you gotta do mm. No, you you forsake not this well, we we're not assembling yeah. per se. Well we assemble tonight. We're yeah. here, here and you're there. We are hereby assembled. Here's the gavel. Yeah, we are here. <laughs> Some are on the on the on the conference line. We are assembled to the to the degree that we are in, in this spectrum in, in the year twenty twenty. Uh, but it is important that we don't forsake the assembling of ourselves, right. that we can get, continue to receive our faith instructions. Right, right. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, because it's so important that the people of God 
hear a sound that they know without a shadow of a doubt, no matter what's going on in the world, no matter who's at 1600 Pennsylvania, God is still on the throne. Mm -hmm. He's still in control. And in talking about the assembly, the reason why I find the assembly so important, not only to me, but to all Christians, is because you mean to tell me there's nobody in that assembly who stirs you, who mm -hmm. motivates you, who gives you a good word, who builds you up? Uh, I mean, just as I think one of our, my definitely one of my examples, every time I see uh, Deacon Charles Anderson, I get in, I get, you know, uh, I feel comfortable because I understand from him just the way he carries himself, from the uh, from the testimonies that I heard, from just the way that he he speaks. Um, you know that there is an assurance there, and being that he is a senior of mine, if he can make it, I can make it. I can make it. There are several other names I can call. I mean, every time, even though if you don't think I'm watching you, and that's why they always tell us the kids are watching us, because I'm watching those who are ahead of me. Right. Yes, and right. there are individuals who I can see by the power of their walk in their testimony. They don't even have to say a testimony out of their mouth. But as they move forward, I can see that I can move forward. Mm -hmm. That's why the Bible says we have this blessed hope. <laughs> so, I mean, it, it is beautiful that we forsake not the assembly because at the same time, everybody, as we were talking about earlier, everybody might not be for you, but those who can motivate you, for those who can push you, don't cut off mm -hmm. your, whole, uh, your whole limb mm -hmm. when you can use a few of the fingers on it. Right. Because there has to be something. I should say don't cut off your whole hand. Uh, because there are a few of those fingers that you know you can still reach for something. Yeah, see? see, so there there are there are individuals in the assembly who still help us, right. who still mean us good. Who I mean, in spite of, and at the same time as we're forgiving those others and hopefully powerfully building those relationships, eventually those individuals who used to be our challenges right. can now be our motivations. Right. Yes, because yes. I think as you were saying, right. in part. I don't allow you to stop me. Every time I see you, I say hello. Every time I see you, I greet you with love and peace. Eventually, either I'll wear you down or you'll remove yourself. <laughs> One or the other. Right. One or the other. My, My grandma mm -hmm. said you can catch more flies with honey. Yes. So we got to spread that honey. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm like you. I, you know, I see uh, uh, some of the, the women. Uh, mm -hmm. Sister Charity Brown, Sister Evelyn, mm -hmm. Sister Molly Kay. Those were... People of faith to me yes. that it helped me to increase my yes. faith, so I can. I was like, okay, if Sister Charity can get through that, I can too. Yeah. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. I got. I got. Uh, <laughs> I, I heard from heaven. <laughs> just, just wait. Happy birthday, Miss Mama Charity. This is Mama oh, Charity oh, Brown's birthday. birthday today. Yeah, happy, happy birthday! birthday. Happy birthday! <laughs> she gonna get us. You know, she don't like recognition. <laughs> yeah, birthday. But she's a, she's a motivator to me, mm -hmm. right? And she she's been going. I've never seen her waver. I've I've, I've seen her to just go through. And to me, that's faith, mm -hmm. that hope, that if she has it, like you said, I can have it too. Yes, because I'm serving the same God. Mm -hmm. So I'm going I'm gonna keep on coming, and I'm you know I'll sit back and I'm watching. Mm -hmm. And like you said, the kids are watching, but you know the adults are watching too. Yes. Yes. Because we all need that motivation, that that help with to increase that faith, to to keep us going forward and to moving forward toward that mark. Because that's where I'm going. I'm trying to reach for that mark. Mm -hmm. And having faith, I got to have my faith, and I got to have me some hope. Mm -hmm. You know, my grandma said, you know, a little this and that, a little this and, and make a whole cake. You yeah. know, you add a little bit of this. Yeah, I'm gonna add a little bit of, bit of charity. I'm gonna add a little bit of Sister Evelyn, Sister mm -hmm. Molly K, and I'm gonna add a few others in mm -hmm. there. And I, hey, I got it made. Mm -hmm. But the most of all, put that icing on that icing. Gonna be Jesus. <laughs> it's gonna this be Jesus. He's gonna time. cover the cake, mm -hmm. even though he's the main ingredient. Mm -hmm. So if if we as Christians. Keep coming together. And if, if, like you said, if somebody step on your toes, God bless you and keep going. Mm -hmm. God bless you and keep going. I know with, with this corona thing, I'm, I told my husband, I'm so tired of being angry. 
He said, what you angry about? I said, every time I go to the store, I tell somebody to back up. <laughs> back up. I don't want you up on me. Back up. But then I have to think, these people, we are not used to living like that. Right. So it's a change. And change is, for some people, are hard. It's hard. Mm -hmm. I know sometimes certain things it is, it's changed for me, it's a little hard. It's changed for all of right. us. And in this spectrum that we're in, we have to learn to not be judgmental either. Yes. I saw a post and it really, whoo, Lord, it sent my soul ablaze because I hadn't thought about it. And it was a mother. She put a sign on her baby. She put a, so she took a, a, a sign and put it on her baby. Do not judge me. I know my child is not supposed to be in the store, but I'm a single mother. Amen. Should I have left my child at home? Wow. Mm. To come get by uh, Staples, you know. Oh, Jesus. Wow. Because, you know, in my house, I, I know I, right. you said it last week, you're the person who, do, who does the running for your house. Mm -hmm. My wife does the running for our, our house. So, as they've asked us, only one person per home visits stores. One person. Uh, and so, in a single family home, what are you supposed to do? Mm -hmm. And it is so easy to be, oh, what she got, look at that, got that baby in here. Mm -hmm. We do that in the church. We look at, mm -hmm. at folks and see, what they got that on for? Oh, yeah. Mm. Now, she know she too this for to be wearing, <laughs> to be wearing, <laughs> to be wearing that. Wow. Now he know that's them pains. Them, my grandma would say, them pains is, is too tight for him. So tight. <laughs> what he got that on for? Looking like, mm-hmm, mm-hmm, uh, 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 uh. Praise the Lord. You know, we have so much judgmental uh thoughts in us. And then as as Trustee McFall called Christian, that Christian cop uh -huh. come out. Mm -hmm. And we go to just arresting everybody. And don't arrest yourself. You need yeah. to, you need to a citizens Christian arrest yourself sometime for the stuff that you think mm -hmm. and yeah. the stuff that you do. Have to check ourselves. Yes, you better because if you don't, somebody else will. That's it. Mm -hmm. And God forbid if he have to check you himself. Ooh. Ooh. the worst Ouch. check I think you could ever get is when God have to come and shake you mm -hmm. and arrest you. Mm -hmm. I, I've shared this before uh, here at Mount Calvary. Um, anybody who knows me for any length of time will agree that Kevin Chambers was an arrogant son of a gun. That's me. So next to Messi, you uh, a hot mess, <laughs> arrogant. And when God showed me me mm -hmm. in prayer, ooh, I was I was yeah I was I was upset. At God for five seconds, and then I was upset with myself, cause then when I went to sleep, I had a dream about the stuff. You remember that that, that was the Christmas Carol movie when the, mm -hmm. the ghost of Christmas past coming yep. and, and takes mm -hmm. take a Scrooge on the, on the journey and right. show you your yesterday. When God showed me my my me, that messed me up. And all I did was I I, I was studying to preach. I couldn't get it right. So I went into prayer. And when I went into prayer, the prayer became a condemnation. Mm. It, came, it became a conviction. Kevin, you think more highly of yourself mm. than you ought to. Not me, God. <laughs> what are you talking about? <laughs> you think more highly of yourself. Who, me? No, not me. Mm hmm Folks was talking to me about stuff back in my, my first pastorate. I was a whole, whole, total hot mess. And she questioned me about stuff, and I went and showed her the sign. Well, who name on that sign? And the first thing that had happened in so many years, a tornado came through Detroit. Mm. A tornado came wow. through Detroit. Now, you Google that. When was the last time a tornado was in wow. Detroit? And then Google the last time before that. Or a tornado came through Detroit and knocked that pretty sign off the building. Mm. Mm. Who name on the sign? And he, he said, oh, Lord Jesus. Mm. Oh, Lord. Mm. I've been mean to your people. It was preacher, mm -hmm. prophesying. They be preach pastor. And I had been just mean to folk. Rude to people. Mm. 
Mm. Walking in arrogance, thinking you more highly of yourself than you should. Mm -hmm. And when God had to bring you down to a point where you, he convicts you because you're so judgmental and you're so this and you're so right. that, I think that's the worst thing, but it's also the best thing. Because after I settle from that, I'm a more calmer person. I get a little edgy, but I'm calmer. I can't get no comments from my wife in the comment section. I'm calm. <laughs> I'm a calmer person today than I have ever been. All because of God. Mm -hmm. Yes, I believe there's a certain way we ought to do things in the house of God, and I, I want things to run a certain kind of way. Yes, yet as a pastor, I uh, will hope every pastor wants to have the best uh, uh Worship experience for the people of God because after all they done went through all kinds of hell all week mm -hmm. And they don't want to come to church and you fumbling over the scripture you fumbling over the, uh, the song being sung you fumbling over the sermon They they got better things to do they, they right. two hours or an hour and a half to come listen to you fumble uh, uh, What they say God Was it did God what did, God did Everybody got time for that? Mm -hmm. We want to present to you the very best yes. so that your faith can be renewed. And if we fumbling, if we messing up, mm -hmm. and we not excited, and we not right. uh, encouraging to ourselves, how right. are you going to encourage somebody else? Right. Yes. right. How do they get stirred up in their faith and faith ain't been stirred up in you? Right. Mm -hmm. right. I don't know how we... I'm gonna shut up, y'all. Go ahead. <laughs> I mean, that, that's just that's good stuff, and then it's it it's somewhat. Uh, I was again, Facebook reminds me of everything I post every day with those memories. I I said uh, a while ago, I didn't want to be, and I don't know when. I had to be like six, seven, eight years ago that I posted it. You can't lead through something you haven't been through. Right. Oh Jesus. And and it, it 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 hit me like a ton of bricks. The reason why I keep going through stuff is because I can't lead anybody if I haven't been through nothing. Been through if I haven't experienced heartache. If I haven't uh, experienced being on both sides of forgiveness, on both sides of of the faith, on both sides of hope, uh, both sides of love, and both sides of peace. I can't preach it in this thing if I haven't walked it a little bit. You got to walk it out. Yes. It. I know you. years ago, I can't remember who used to, who said this, was that Reverend Jackson, she would do the same scripture every week and finally they asked her, Reverend Jackson, why are you teaching the same scripture? He's, and they t she told him, because you haven't got it yet. Yes. That's why I keep going over the same scripture over mm -hmm. and over and over again. But, you know, when we get into the scripture, God will reveal he will show you. And I know when yes. I'm reading, the Lord will show me, okay, this is where you at. This is where I want you to be, but this is where you at right now. So Bible studies and Sunday school and, and, and the preach word on Sundays is important. Mm -hmm. It's definitely important, and we need that. It's, it's our food. It's, it's like Reverend Foreman said, you know, we got uh, uh, Christian retards. I don't want to be no retard. I want to get in the word, you know, because that's what we, we're malnourished if we don't get into the word. Mm -hmm. So if we get into the word, God's going to feed us and he's going to increase mm -hmm. who we are. And that is himself. He's going to increase in us. Yes. So if he increase in us, then he's going to show us all that we need to know. Yes. So he's going to give us that faith. He's going to increase that faith. He's going to give us that and continue that mm -hmm. hope because he promised. That's that's what I'm 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 leaning on. I'm going to keep on with his promise. Lord, you promised me. Mm -hmm. So if I asked, and if I need to forgive my brothers, let me forgive my brothers. Because that's what's going to help clean that slate, get that stuff out. So if it, it has to be seven times 70, so mm -hmm. be it. And if that's going to increase my faith and my hope going to continue, let us do that. When we come back from all of this, 
I hope, my hope is things will be different, that we are a closer bond because Mount Calvary is a family. Right. Mm -hmm. right. We are a family. <clears throat> no, we're not going to get along all the time because, you know, I'm, me and my husband, you know, we have our little tit tats. But I know to say, if I'm wrong, honey, I'm wrong. I'm, I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. And he's the same way. He can come to me and say, honey, I, you know, I, I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. and, and I thank God for that relationship. And I think yes. that's where uh, all of this is about, is the relationship that we need to have with each other. Yes. To, to, to hold us together. And faith and hope is going to be that mortar that's going to go in between yes. that. And it's going gonna, it's gonna to be a lot sturdier. You know, we have to have that. You know, I, I, I told my daughter and her husband when they first got married, I said, this is not a 50-50 relationship. It will not work. It has to be 90-10. That 10%, you ain't going to let nobody have. But that 90%, you, it's a little bit stronger. Mm -hmm. And with having that faith in, in Christ, we can do all things. Yes. Because he said, all things are possible with me. And I can, I can show you. And he's willing to show us. Mm -hmm. When he asks his father to forgive us, same thing we need to do. Right. Absolutely. We have to do the same thing so we can increase and keep growing and growing and growing. Mm -hmm. But I'll be glad to see my family back in these four walls right. again. Because right. I miss them. Yeah. You know? I, I think... Um... And I, we didn't announce it. In Hebrews 6, uh, 16 through 19 is where we talk about, we're talking about hope in this, hope. Uh, this latter part. And what I was um, finding, if I am interpreting 17 to, uh, correctly, I like the fact that it's basically talking about his counsel being undiluted. Right. If I'm yes. understanding that correctly. He is un, an undiluted God. He, he is, he's giving you 100% of himself at all times. Yeah. So uh, when you get to talking about counsel, we have a mighty counselor, uh, an un undiluted one who can, I mean, when he talks about we're heirs and joint heirs, he means that. Right. That we, we are not, we are entitled to our inheritance right now. We don't have to wait on it. Nobody has to transition. Nobody has to pass. He, he sets hope in front of us. Yes. Actually, let's, let's, let's read that. That's verse 17. Yes, sir. In, in the God's Word translation, it says like this. God wouldn't change his plan. He wanted to make this perfectly clear to those who would receive his promise. So he took an oath, right. which goes back to, to mm -hmm. the, the 16th verse. Right. So he took an oath. He swears by himself. He swears by himself. Right. I am God. Mm -hmm. And besides me, there is no other. There is none other. There is none other. I am the greatest power that mm -hmm. there is. And we have to realize that there is, uh, I, I posted on, on Twitter, I know y'all know on Twitter, uh, uh, and I was poking fun at, at the song that said, I looked all over and I couldn't right. find nobody. I, I looked, searched yeah. high and low couldn't and couldn't. And so I said, my testimony is, I ain't looked all over. I ain't searched high nor low because I already knew that there was nobody greater nobody than God. Greater. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so... Albeit the, the, the writer of that song may have had to have that experience to look and search. But mm -hmm. I thank God that, you know, as the Bible said, train up a child in the way he, he should, should go. go. I, I, I've should known go. From, from as early as I can recall that there was nobody greater in my life Amen. than the Lord. Amen. Yes. See, I like that other half of that. It says to take hold of hope and set before us. <clears throat> may be greater encouragement or encourage. We have to, we can take hold of, of hope. Well, that's about, you take it by confidence. Yes. Because we, 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 we are we assured, can. we are assured certain things, mm -hmm. being heirs and joint heirs of our, of our God. And so that is so important, you know, like I was arrogant, maybe I should have directed my arrogance towards confidence. Mm hmm, mm -hmm. And, and so let's arrogance. See, arrogance is of yourself. Right. Yes. And then when your confidence is is yes. beyond God. you. So I have a confidence that I don't have to be arrogant. Right. Mm -hmm. God is behind me. And so I guess I was so busy pushing Kevin. Mm -hmm. I was a young pastor trying to pr promote myself and make sure you hear me. I'm young and I got an older congregation. So I maybe have to rely 
more on the power that was behind me right. than trying to present my own power. Because of right. myself, I can do nothing. But with God, all things all are possible. Yes. This has been Word on Wednesday. I'm your host, Bishop Kevin Chambers. We bring you greetings again from the Mount Calvary Community Church. We are the biggest little church right here in Omaha, Nebraska, 5112 Ames Avenue in the beautiful city of Omaha, Nebraska. Please, uh, won't you consider to sow in your seed tonight? This is good ground. You may do so by going to your cash app. Hit us up on your phone when we log, log off. Dollar sign M3C 5112. Or visit us on the web at www.m3c omaha.org this has been your host bishop chambers reverend randell moore and minister antoinette simmons minister simmons uh want to lead us in prayer i can dear heavenly father lord we just thank and praise you for this opportunity to come before your people yes god to bring your word of hope and faith lord in help us to increase our faith and hope in you lord for you gave us a promise and father we're going to stand on that promise Father, I ask you to just touch those who are in need of your love and your kindness. Father, touch those that's in the nursing home yes, and those that are confined, Lord. Just bless them. Father, I ask you to just bring us back in love, peace, and joy. In the name of your son, Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. And thank God. May the Lord bless and keep you. May heaven smile upon you. Be gracious unto you. And may he give you his peace. Until next time, meet us again this same channel, this same station, Sunday, 1015 for Sunday School and 11 a.m. for morning worship. God bless you. Amen. Amen.